What is going on my fellow game developers? My name is Muddy Wolf and today we are starting a new series to help you guys learn how to make your own video games. Now we're going to be using Godot and I'm going to be making a 2D platformer from start to finish over a series of videos. So in this first tutorial we're going to be adding in a tile map. Uh, we're going to be using Kenny's uh, platformer, pixel platformer pack here. I'll leave a link in the description. It is free to download. It's a really thing and you should also consider donating to Kenny. This isn't sponsored by the way. I just really appreciate his stuff because it makes my job a lot easier. I don't have to come up with some really cool tile sets. So you can see here, these are the sort of tile sets we can create with what we've been given. Uh, and it's really nice. Cool. So this is the game so far. Now I'm going to be adding in a few nice features. So we have this character controller. There's no animations yet, but they are coming in a future video. Um, and you can move left to right. You can jump. And also, look, if I tap jump, we do a small jump. If I hold jump, we do a bit of an extended jump, kind of like how Mario works. So you can get that bigger and more accurate jump you need. Uh, we can also have coyote times. So as I run off the edge there, you'll see that it jumps a... It, allows me to jump even though I have fallen just off the platform. It makes for a better and more intuitive game because um, if you run off the edge and you can't jump and you fall straight down, it kind of gets frustrating. Obviously, this war will just kill your character when you we get to that point. But we are there yet. We're just going to be learning how we can set up a tile map, a background tile map, and also a character controller that you can control by jumping with really nice jumping and smooth movements. Uh, yeah, that's that's basically it. it's super straightforward and really easy to do. So let's basically get started Okay, guys, I just want to mention the source code for this game The whole project is going to be on my patreon. So if you're a Wolf beta wolf tier or above you'll be able to get access to all of the source code from previous tutorials That includes every single Godot tutorial we have done on this channel so far uh, and a few unity projects as well um, you'll also be able to get access to this project uh, lesson by lesson every single time we upload a new video The project will be there ready for you guys to uh, Download and it also helps support the channel Lastly if you want to join our discord server the link is down below There's a bunch of really fun people and if you get stuck or you need help We have our dedicated help forum where you can post link and someone should be along to help you Okay guys, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna launch the Godot uh, project manager and all we're gonna do is click new now over here, you want to find your folder. So I have a game development tutorials folder and I'm going to call this to the platformer tutorial. And I'm just going to hit create folder. That's going to create a folder inside of our projects. Now, if you've never used Godot before, you still don't know how to download it. I'll leave a link down below where you can just download the engine. It's as simple as downloading it, double clicking it to open it. And there it goes. It works. Uh, and you'll be at this point where we are now. Um, and yeah, so you can see here we have version control meta. I'm going to turn that to none because I'm not actually going to be saving this to Git. I'm just going to package it up and pull it on my Patreon. Uh, and there you go. And we're also going to use the mobile uh, the mobile renderer. Uh, that's because it supports both desktop and mobile. And we're not using 3D. So the rest of this doesn't really matter to us. Forward is great uh, for 3D stuff, but we don't need it. And compatibility is if you want to do like web browser games and stuff like that. So you can use this. What I teach you in this should work really with any of these renderers. It's up to you what you want to use. But for this, I'm just going to use the mobile renderer. I'm going to create an edit, and that is going to launch our project. It's going to get us set up with a new project, and once that loads, you'll be introduced to this uh, scene. Okay, so from this scene, what we want to do is we want to create a base node. So if you've never used uh, Godot before, it's all based on nodes, and every node has a purpose. So the first thing we want to do is just in an empty project, we'll click other node and I like to start off with a base node. Now this is just the default top level nodes that does absolutely nothing really other than be a, a process. Something that can render, something can handle something. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call, I'm going to call it main. Uh, and this is basically just going to be our main window. So when we launch this game, this is the thing that's going to always be rendered for our game. It's the main scene. Uh, and then inside of here, I like to add a 2D node, so no 2D, I like to rename it to 2D scene, and this is where all our 2D elements will go in, and you'll see once I added that 2D node, the scene swapped from a 3D to a 2D scene. Now we can save this uh, main scene in the root directory, so just this rest folder, call it main and hit save, and that's just in there ready to go. Now I do want to set up a folder structure for this project, so I'm going to create some new folders in here. And I'm going to start off with assets 
and inside the assets, I am gonna have, oh, that's not what I was supposed to do, I was supposed to create a new folder, and inside of here, I'm gonna call this sprites. Okay, and then when we've got this, I just wanna create one more folder in here, and this is gonna be called our scenes, and this is what's gonna hold all of our scenes other than the main scene. I like to keep the main, main scene outside in the root, because that's the thing that launches our, what holds our game together. I, I have a weird way of working things. To be fair, we could probably even just place this in the root of the scenes folder. And then inside of here, we can create um, an entities folder. This will be all the elements inside of the game scenes. And then we're also gonna have another folder called our levels. Now there's gonna be each level we load into the game. And I'll show you a really cool trick to load and deload, unload levels along this uh, in this tutorial. So now we've got that, we actually want to create our first level. Now to do that, we're going to want to go up to our uh, top here and just click this new one and create a new 2D scene and we're going to rename this to level. Or in our case, we could call it level one, but I'm just going to call it level and hit save. Now I'm going to go into scenes, levels and save this as level 01. And that is now a scene we can launch in here. So we can actually open this scene. If I close this, we can just go in here and open it up there. And there you go, it will be added to our level. Now we need one more thing. We need to actually download Kenny Sprite. So what you wanna do is click download. And once you have done that, we should be able to, you wanna select this folder, go into where you've just downloaded the Kenny Sprites. So I'm gonna go in here, tie your map. And what I wanna do is I wanna select the ones I want. So I wanna select these three and I'm gonna drag them into it. Sorry, to do that, what we might do is we actually wanna open this up in the file manager first because we need to drag it. Because this is a uh, zip file, it won't let me pull out of this without actually uh, copying it to an actual folder instead of there. And there you go, once we close this, click back in here, you'll see the sprites are all loaded in this sprites folder. I'm also gonna drag the icon in here because it's technically a sprite. And that just keeps all our things in one place. So the next thing we're gonna wanna do is actually add a tile map node into our level scene. So by the way, you're probably wondering how are you adding nodes? You can press control. So you can also go up to your scene here and click this add icon and then search for a node here. You can also press control shift A to add in nodes that you've already created. So let's say we wanted to add, for some reason, the main scene into this scene, you would double click this, open it or add it to your scene. But I just wanna add in a tile map. Now this, I'm just gonna rename to main tile map. This is because we're gonna have two tile maps, one for the foreground and one for the background, due to these being different pixel sizes. Now once we've got this main tile map, I'm gonna go over to tile set, I'm gonna change this to 18 because we're actually running 18 by 18s. I wanna go a new tile set, and inside of here, we're gonna set this to 18 by 18. We also wanna add a physics layer, which we are gonna set, let's just open this up a little, so we're gonna have a physics layer and layers allow you to tell the, yeah, the game engine what actually can collide with Chuffer and what can't. So we're gonna actually set some names for our layers here. So if you click on the three dots and click edit layer names, we can go up here in the first layer, I'm gonna call the static layer. The second will be dynamic and the third is going to be our danger layer, which is where all our like dangerous items that can collide with the player and destroy the player are going to go in here. And there you go. So dynamic would be for things that can move around and static are going to be for like the level elements that just stay still in the world. And there we go. So the nice thing we can do is we can set the collision mask for this to be for um, one and two. This means that this can collide with uh, things on layers one and two. However, this is gonna be the static layer. And then finally, we wanna come down to our layers here and we just want two layers. Now I'm gonna have a, uh, I'm gonna have a platforms layer, which is gonna be where basically all our stuff, our, our items go. Um, and we're gonna give this just a C index of zero. This is gonna be the base one. And then I'm gonna add one more called our water layer. And this is gonna be a C index of one because we want it in front of our um, platforms because it's basically just gonna go across the whole bottom of our screen. It's a nice little, there's a lake, if you fall down, you're gonna fall in water sort of thing. And there we go, that is now added in. So now we've set up our main tile map, what we wanna do is actually set up the tile set. To do that, you wanna select the tile set uh, tab at the bottom here, 
Come over to the tile map you want. So we're going to want the main tile map here. And we want to drag this in here. Now it's going to ask you to automatically create tiles. Would you want to select yes? However, with Kenny's tile map, it's actually out by one pixel because it's all got a separation. So what we want to do is add one separation to each. Let me bring this up, sorry. And you'll see that adds the proper spacing. So if we remove this, you'll see it's actually out. The further along you go, the worse it looks because it all needs one pixel more on the separation. And there you go, that's now all sorted. However, this wouldn't have no collision. So if we painted this into our map, our player will just fall straight through the ground because this has no collision shape. Now to get a collision shape, we're gonna select this and you can select a tile. Down in the physics here, so up here where we created our physics layer, you can see we have a physics. Now what we wanna do here is we can press F, or if we select this and press F, you'll see it adds a collision shape. Now you can modify the shape to match how you want it, but for the majority of this, we're just gonna want one shape. So I'm coming along all of these, click them and press F. And I'm gonna go throughout the whole thing and just really quickly add F to every single one. Now you can see I'm just quickly adding it to these ones as well and I'm also going to add it to the water just to make it a bit more easier when we add the water in so we don't fall through the ground and have to restart every single time when we're testing. Uh, but later on we're going to swap the, in a different, in a later story we're going to actually make the water dangerous to us which means we're going to have to use a different um, physics layer to actually add the uh, the danger zone on. Now you could go through every single one of these and add them. For example, you could do these cloud ones, but what I'm going to do with these cloud ones, I'm actually going to make it fit the shape a little better. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring it in about here. Uh, you can add more points as well. As you see here, this would probably be better with a second point here, just to stretch it out a little bit more, probably something like that. Um, and there you go. Uh, and then we can go across this one and this one, I'm just going to bring it up. I think that works fine. Maybe give it a little bit more down and then finally a similar shape up here so we're gonna go up here bring this in add a second point and just bring it over here this just gives it a bit more of a matching uh shape and then you could do the same with this one and just bring it up here as well uh and there you go just just to show you how you can move those around as well and that tile map is now done so what we can do is go to tile set and we can actually start painting now i'm going to be using the center point as where the player will spawn so what I'm gonna do, is I'm gonna zoom in here, I'm gonna select this tile right here, and I'm gonna add it in here. But you're gonna see this isn't actually set. You can see the pixels are really blurry. They don't look very good, and it's very zoomed out. So the first thing I'm, we're gonna do is I'm gonna go to our transform, and I'm gonna two times the size of the canvas, just to make it a little bigger. But then I wanna go to project, project settings, and we wanna look for our textures under rendering, and where it says texture filter linear, we want to change this to nearest. Close this, and if we zoom in, you'll see the pixels are not blurred. This one here is blurred because it's it's just showing you the uh, the one you're gonna place. Uh, but you can see the actual pixels on screen are no longer blurry. And finally, in our project sense, we actually want to mess around with the window settings. You can see here the viewport width and height is uh, quite big, and we actually want these to be 640 by 360. Now, if we come back, you'll see this is the, this square is actually the camera zone. And if we was to just run, oh, just run this scene here, you'll see this is, when we said 640, this is all we're going to see. However, we're going to add a camera into this to our player later on, which will match, which will basically spawn where this is and follow our player around. But you can see here, we have just this area here done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in, I'm actually going to delete these. So you can see we have tools down here and I have a rubber I can use to rub things out. We have a square mode so I can add a bunch in at once if you uncheck rubber that is. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to add in a couple down here. I'm going to add an edge here. Uh, go back to pencil mode. Uh, and I'm going to add an edge here. Now at the bottom here we have the other ones where we can just bring this down. Uh, I'm just going to bring it down to about there for now. We can bring this across. Um, we can actually set that as a corner piece, a corner piece, and then bring this up. Now, there's a big chunk in the middle, and you could just add it all in like this, but there's a fill tool as well, which allows us to fill it all in like that. 
There's also a different cube here, which gives you a slightly different variety. So if we select both of these and click the random key, when we actually paste it in there, it will randomly place all of these in here. So you can see now it's got some random placement for the uh, different tiles we've selected. So this is technically our first platform, and this has been done on the platforms layer. We want to now add in some water across the whole of the start of this map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the water layer. I'm going to select these two tiles. I'm probably going to pull it about here. And I'm just going to drag this a little ways across both sides. Then I'm going to get this one, select the square, and just bring it probably down here. Now that technically makes all the ones under here useless. And we can actually delete these ones here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select this. Go back to platforms and I'm just going to delete, well, from a, one more oh, one more lower from there because these ones will still be seen slightly. Um, and then I can go back into the water, platform, select this, and once again, just add a bit more in there. Oh, uncheck the eraser. And there you go. That's now looking a bit different. Now you can see it's highlighting whichever, whichever layer we're currently on. If you don't want it to look like that, you can check this and it will show you both from as normal. But it's a good way to notice what layer you're working on by having the upper ones kind of fade away. So what I want to do is I just want to add some jumping platforms to this where we can actually jump across. So I'm going to select this one here. Now you can select multiple at once by highlighting all of them. I'm going to select the place and then I'm going to give it a two space, two space, and that's enough a platform. I'm then going to select this, come over here, give it a two space because I'm aiming to have a nice little two space platform area here. Um, oh, and I've realized I've done this on the wrong layer with all of that. So don't forget to make sure you select the correct layer because this will be important later on. So I will give two, oh, two, and then we can add in our platform back here. Bring this down a couple, across a few, and back up. Oh, I selected the wrong one for that. There we go. So there you go, you can see that's there, and then we need to extend the water again, just so it comes across all of this. Uh, so let's just bring that across, probably a few more, um, and then box add in the rest. Now this is a very basic looking platformer right now, um, and if we was to jump off, we could still jump off the edge of the map. Uh, but you can style this however you want. I'm going to do proper level design later on in this. For now, we just want a basis down ready to go. So now we've got our foreground. I'm actually going to deselect this so we can see the whole thing. We still need a background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new tile map node. And I'm going to change this to be our background tile map. Oh, make sure you, well, doesn't matter if you spell it wrong, but I like to make sure it's spelled right. Now I'm going to change this to be 24 pixels and we'll create a new tile set which is also 24 pixels. We do not need a physics layer for this one and we also only need a background layer. However, we do want to make sure this background layer set index is minus one. Now this is going to be the order it is inside the scene, meaning it will pull it behind all of our objects that are currently there. Now we need to go to our tile set and drag in our tile map backgrounds. And this one I'm going to automatically create again, but you can see once again, it needs the one pixel offset for all of it. Now I'm going to go back to tile map and I'm going to select these ones. I'm going to go to the draw and I just want to add this in, but you can see they look really small compared to these ones. So once again, I just want to match the tile pixel size for these ones. So we need to make sure this scale is the same scale as our main tile map, uh, which will make the actual pixel density basically the same. So you can see here, these are about there. Let's add them in uh, about here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select these and I'm going to select the box. I'm going to turn on the random again. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag a line the whole way through here to give it kind of a random effect. So it kind of picks the random ones just to go in there. Now, if you don't like the random it's done, you can just go over it again and keep going until you find something you like. Now, I'm just going to do this one more time, just then I'm going to stick with this. I'm not too fussed at how this looks. And then it doesn't actually matter which one of these tiles you select. I'm just going to grab one, turn off the random, and I'm just going to draw a bit of a skybox above. 
and select this one and draw the sky box below. And you can see that all fits in and now we have a nice looking scene. And I'm just going to save this and that's technically it just for our tile map editing right now. Um, there's also, just to mention, you can see here that a new feature in 4.2 is the ability to rotate your tiles. So I'm just going to select this tile to show you the select pencil mode. And if I press Z or X, you can see I can actually rotate this and place it upside down. Now I'm going to undo that, but you can see if you wanted to mess around with some tiles, even these ones in here, you can actually do that by um, rotating them. Okay, so now back in our main, what I'm going to do just to start with is drag in our level one scene into our level scene here. But later on, we'll dynamically um, render or we'll dynamically add this in when the game loads uh, to decide which level needs to be set. So if you're on level five, it will load level five and so forth. But right now, we're just going to add this in for testing just so we actually have a scene in our main scene here. Now, we need to add a new uh, scene or create a new uh, packed scene. And I'm going to search for the character body 2D. This is basically a physics body that allows the character to actually fall. It will give it its physics. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rename this to the player. Now, you can see there's a warning here because we haven't got a collider. Uh, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add in a, um, well, the actual character sprite. So what I want to do is I want to select this and go Sprite. And you can see we've got a Sprite 2D here added in. And then on the right, we need to add in our texture, which we're going to add in the character's tile map, which you're going to see is actually wrong. This is a whole tile map. You can select any one of these. We're going to select the little green guy, or we could go for the pink guy. It doesn't really matter. But I'm going to select the green guy. I'm going to go over to our region. And I'm going to enable a region. I'm going to give this the width of 48 pixels and the height of 48 pixels. That's too many. That needs to be 24 pixels and the width of 48 or 49. Because there's one pixel space between these, I think 49 is the correct one. And then what we wanted, oh, actually saying that it should be 24 by 24. Because that will give us the, no, this should definitely be 49. The reason for that is because we're going to use the animation frames here and you see this horizontal frame so we're going to set it to 2 which will then select it. Now if we change the actual frame you can see it actually becomes, so if we select frame 1 it will go to the next frame, back to frame 0 and you can keep kind of like switching this uh, just to give you different ones. You can also change the one down here um, and there you go you can see that. You can actually go in here and set this to if you was to make this longer to match the actual size, you could go in and add them all. Now, I want to save this real quick in our entities folder called player scene. And then I want to go back to our main scene and I'm just going to drag in our player on our 2D scene. Now you can see here, he's actually the wrong pixel size again, because he's not two times like our other ones. So we just want to come in here and also make him two times. Now there's loads of different ways you can size your um, sprites inside your game. But one of them, I'm just mainly going to be scaling using this. Now, if we hit play and we cancel, because I want to go to the main scene, hit play. It's going to ask us, oh, we need a main scene. So I'm just going to make sure it's our main scene there. Uh, so selecting current. And then you can see this is currently what the game looks like. It looks completely wrong. It's the wrong shape um, and it's not right. And if we scale this up, you can see it doesn't work either. So what we want to do is go to our project settings, our window, and we change this. That should have been 360. So for us, that was wrong by default. And then what we want to do is come down to our mode and we want to change this to canvas items. This will make sure the items stretch correctly. Now you can enable the integer scale mode, which will make the pixels pixel perfect as you scale. So you won't get any pixels stretching or anything like that. Uh, but it kind of restricts your resolution of the, the game a little and it doesn't look quite right to me. So I'm just leaving it at fractional. Finally, if we launch this game now, the issue we're gonna have is the game is gonna be a really tiny window. You can see there's a really tiny window here. It doesn't look quite right. So let's close this 
and actually go back to our project settings. Now we can select window and turn on the advanced settings. And if you go down here, you can see the window width override. Now this is gonna be what it actually loads as. So the main one, everything is gonna run off this screen size, but the actual override will allow it to be a bigger size. We can say 1920 by 1080. So when we launch the game, it will come out in the bigger size, but the pixels will just be stretched to fit. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we wanna put the camera on our player scene. So go to our player, let's add in a camera 2D, and there you go, you can see it just level, keeps our player basically in there, and you can set a zoom um, to this. So the other way, instead of scaling up your pixels or your sprites, you can turn the camera to actually zoom in. I like just having it set to one and just scaling up the pixels a little. It normally works fine. Um, if you see anything looking a bit blurry or you have any issues, then just, just change this, just switch to using the zoom instead. Now, if we save this, and I also add in a collision shape 2D, I'm gonna select a capsule shape, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fit this to our player. So over on the right, we can change the height to be, I think, 48 which is correct, and the width to be about 16, maybe. That should be fine. Um, and there you go, you can see the error has now gone from our player. We can actually press play on our game again. And there you go, you see the camera now fits around our player because the camera's on our player, so it's not using the default uh, zones. And now he is there. So finally, I just want to add in the ability for the player to move with a lot of better jumping and coyote time. There's a few different things we can do to make this look a bit better and actually have the player move. So in our player scene, we want to add in a player script and we're just gonna leave this in our entities and we're gonna select the basic movement template. So if this is unchecked, just tick this and select the basic movement template. It's a template already built into um, Godot and then just hit create. Now with this, we can actually play our game it's actually got UI except UI left and UI right, which is the arrow keys and I think the space bar to jump. So let's just hit play on our game. And there you go, you can see he falls, I can jump. He's a bit floaty, which we're gonna fix. And there you go, they, it moves by default. And you can use this um, system, but it it's not very good in my opinion. I would prefer a much more faster falling, you know, all of that stuff in there. So we're gonna modify this um, script. So the first thing I wanna do is I actually wanna tweak all of this. I wanna change this to be an exported far. An export just means you can actually change it in here. You can see now we can change that saying. And I'm gonna leave it at 300 for now. I'm gonna put this in the lower case because only comps are put in uppercase. And I want to change this also to be a far. And I'm gonna call this jump force instead of jump velocity it technically is wrong velocity is correct but i like to i like to think of jump force uh, and i'm going to set this to lower i'm going to put this to minus 250 because we're going to apply this over and over again when we add the i then want a variable which we are going to set as jump time now this is going to be how long you can hold the space bar for and still go up so we're going to set this to something really small um, such as 0 0.25, I found is a good number. This will only allow you to hold it for a quarter of a second to still continue to go up. That's how you kind of get the Mario effect of when you hold the space bar, your character will still go up for a limited amount of time. We then want enough for export far called Coyote time. Um, and this is gonna be how long you have when you run off an edge before you can still jump. And if that time goes over this time, then you won't be able to jump anymore. And we want to set this something really small, like something 0 0.075. You can even go as small as 5, which will still allow you, when you just run off, to be able to get a jump. Um, this works pretty good um, for what we want. And then finally, I want a gravity multiplier. Uh, and this is also going to be a float. And I'm going to set this to 3 times the gravity. This is going to allow us, so when we jump, we're going to fall down a lot quicker. So every time you jump, you will fall faster rather than doing the floaty jump in the air. You kind of get a much better jump. You can see here, we also get gravity from our project settings. Now I normally leave this as default. So if we go to our project, you can actually type in gravity, I believe, turn off advanced, uh, and go to our 2D physics. And you can see the default gravity is 980 and it's in the Y vector. 
um, which is technically default graffiti, um, which works fine. So I'm just going to close that. And that, if you wanted to tweak that, you could, but I prefer adding a multiplier so each thing can have its own sort of force and weight to it. So it's kind of like everything's got its own mass. Now you can see we have some errors in here. We're going to met, we're going to basically tweak all of this in a second. But the next thing I want to do, well, let's change this to jump for size. Let's change this to the jump force and this to be our lowercase speed as well. Now, one thing it says here, as good practice, you should replace the UI actions with custom gameplay actions. So currently, we're just using the UI default ones, which this is spacebar. This would be the left arrow key, and this will be the right arrow key. But what we want to do is go to project settings, input map, and if we show built-in actions, you're going to see the UI accept, which is any one of these. You press enter, KP enter, which is key, uh, keypad enter, and space. UI select is spacebar as well. And then you can also see the UI left and right is set to right and left. Now, for now we're just going to add in some simple ones. We're going to add in jump. I'm going to add in move left and move right. Now, I'm going to select the jump and we're going to click this plus and I'm just going to press spacebar and click OK. So that's going to add the spacebar to our game. You could also come in here and go to joypad buttons and find which joypad button matches like A or X on the PlayStation or Xbox controls uh, if you wanted that input as well. But I'm just going to leave it as nothing for now. We're not going to have uh, controller input in this yet. But if you do want to see that, please let me know. Now I'm going to add in a move left, which is going to be A, and a move right that is going to be D. Now these here, A and D, is going to be how we move left and right. You could also add in the left uh, mouse button or the left a UI button and the right UI button as well. Um, I'm just going to leave that in there for now, but normally I wouldn't add that. I don't, I think people would change it if they actually wanted it to be that. You would add something in your settings, but that's fine. So now this, we need to come in here. We want to change this to our jump key. This should be our move left key, and this should be the move right. Now these names need to match the actual name we gave up here, this one here. So make sure you don't put spaces and stuff in it because you kind of want to keep it with underscores and that just to make it easier to write. Cool. And now if we go back to playing our game, we're able to move again. And you can see we have a much smaller jump because we lowered the jump um, and we can move left to right. Now, one thing I don't like in these sort of games is you can see here we are jumping and the world is moving up with us. I don't mind moving left and right, but when we jump up and down, I don't want to see the camera moving with us. So there's actually a, a built-in thing in our sprite camera. Ah, it's our dr under drag. You can actually turn on enabled and um, set these margins to only move when you need it to. So I like to use something like 0 0.5 and 0 point, oh, and for the bottom also 0 0.5. This means if we hit play, you'll be able to jump and also fall without the camera following you. You can see we're kind of stuck right now, but that's that's essentially it. You, you can move around without the camera jumping up and down, and I think it makes it look a bit nicer. But if you did, for some reason, fall very far, like towards this bottom, the camera would then still follow you. You can also do it with the horizontal, and we can set this to something like 0 0.3. I'd actually probably have this higher in most cases. Um, and you can see when we go left and right, the camera doesn't move until we go very far left or very far right, which is sometimes what people want. But I feel like in a platformer, you kind of want this to probably be a bit closer. I'd probably set this to something, actually, probably the default, which is 0 0.2. There you go. So it move, you've got a little bit of space to move, um, but then it still will move once you get to that edge. And I think that works nicely for a game. Let's leave that on. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is actually make our graffiti be a bit different. I'm going to actually go over it under the graffiti and I'm going to set a file called is jumping, which is going to be a Boolean, which is set to false by default. And then I'm going to set a jump timer which is going to be a flow and we can set this to zero by default we're going to have a coyote timer which is going to be a flow and set by zero to default um, and that should be the only extra ones we need so now in our add gravity we want to check if we are on the floor and we are not is jumping this is just going to tell it if we're not jumping, then we're going to add gravity. But if we are in the middle of jumping, we do not want to add gravity until we're not jumping. We also want to make our coyote timer work. So 
So to do that, we want to say coyote, coyote timer is plus equal to delta. So when we are in, when we are falling or basically not jumping, we should be um, on the ground and that's going to enable our coyote timer to work. But if we are jumping or we are falling, we want to set the coyote timer equal to zero. So if we are in the air and we are jumping, we want to set our coyote timer to zero, which will reset our coyote timer, meaning when we hit the ground again, we'll be able to do another coyote jump. Now in our handle jump, we're going to actually up this quite a bit. So we're going to change the is action. We're going to actually get is floor and I'm going to put parentheses around is floor. And we're going to say or coyote timer is less than our coyote time. So if this is less than our coyote time, that means we're actually able to jump. So we're going to add in a jump force. So I'm going to say is jumping is equal to true. We then want an else if statement that says if we are action just pressed or action pressed, meaning we are still jumping. So we're still holding it and is jumping. We want to then continue to add in an upwards velocity. So we're going to still set our upwards force to be our jump force. This means when we hold the uh, space bar down, we will continue to go up until... Now this is where we're going to have to add in a new if statement. So we can say if is jumping and input dot is action pressed. And we want the jump key. So if we are jumping... Um, and we are, if we are jumping and the action is held down, we want to set, check if our jump time is less than our, or sorry, our jump timer is less than our jump time. And then what we're going to do is we're going to set the jump timer is plus equal to delta. That means it's going to up our jump timer until we get to our jump time. Once we our jump timer is our jump time, we could just say else and say is jumping is equal to false, which will make us then fall back down. And we can set our jump timer back to zero. Now this should give us the better jumpy we want with coyote time and a jump timer to give us that Mario-like jump power. And that is all we need to do to modify our script. Now you can see if I hold it, we go up. And if I jump, we go thingy. So I can do a small jump or a bigger jump. And if I run off the edge, that time I ran off a bit too quick. But you can see, even if I go slightly off the edge, I can still jump. But because I've set quite low, it only gives you a small um, window. But if we go back, if we close this, and on our player, we actually set our code time. So let's say something ridiculous, like um, half a second, then I could literally run off here and jump at any point as I fell off. So you can see here, you see how long the coyote timer is, coyote timer. Um, and the reason it's called Coyote Time is if you've ever seen the T kids TV program with Wild Coyote and the, the bird, the runner. Is it called Runner Bird? I can't remember. Um, that is because when he runs off an edge, he gets a, he suddenly can look down and then he'll fall. It's kind of the, the, the cartoon style jump. Um, and there you go. You can see that works. But we, we want that back to our 0 0.75. It works pretty nice. You can probably go up to 1 on this. Just point 0.1 which would work fine, but I find 0 0.75 works perfect for my games. Now there's one thing we are missing and that's our gravity multiplier. So you see here we have our gravity, but we're not actually multiplying it by our gravity multiplier. So we just need to add that so when we are falling, so now you can see, you can see we fall a lot quicker and that feels a lot nicer. We could do a small jump or we could do a longer jump to get that bit more of a boost but we will still fall down quite quickly. And that is essentially everything I'm going to be doing in this video for this tutorial. This was actually a much longer tutorial than I anticipated. Um, the whole point of this was to get that you a base level before we then have to, before you have to move on to the next one to get all the other features. So what we're going to be doing in the future videos, we're actually going to be setting up a level loader. So you can load in level one, level two, level three, uh, and stuff like that. And what was we going to have then coins? You can collect coins. Uh, so we're going to have collectibles, we're going to have a end goal, so when you get to the end, we're going to add in UI. There's a bunch of stuff we can add to this. There's also other features like wall jumping, if you guys are interested in that. 
a dash ability, maybe even an ability to like the Mario stomp on someone's head. Let me know what features you want to see down below in the comments and I will get working on those for a future uh, part of this series. So guys, don't forget, the, you can go to the Patreon to get the source code for this. You also support the channel. You can join the Discord. The link is down below. But that's going to be it for this video, guys. I will see you in the next one. Peace out.